الله رب العالمين وصلوا وسلموا صلاة وتسليما يا يقالي يا قوم أمير الأنبياء وإمام المرسلين وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله ولي الصالحين وأشهد أن سيدنا ونبينا وحبيبنا وحبيبنا محمد رسول الله خاتم الأنبياء والمرسلين صل اللهم وسلم وبارك على هذا النبي الأمين وعلى آله وصحابته الغر الميامين وارحم اللهم مشايخنا ووالدينا وامواتنا واموات المسلمين اجمعين رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقدة من لساني يفقهوا قولي بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته Kemudian Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala first and foremost Dan Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Dan baiklah sebab umat Nabi Muhammad Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh Dan Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala And bless us with iman We then second we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala For Granting us the ability to witness A unique awakening of the umat Whatever is happening with our brothers and sisters in Islam, in Palestine, in Gaza at the moment, it has shown us the strength of the Iman. The Iman, Allah SWT has granted us the ability to see they are steadfast, having lost homes, family, mother, father, children, etc. They lost everything, but they are steadfast. Also shown us the sincerity. That even if they take away the children, and half of Gaza is children, by the way, if they kill all those children, those mothers, what did they say? They will, they will bear more children. They will give birth to more children so that they can teach them about jihad, so they can go for jihad, peace and peace and peace. So Allah SWT has shown us within our Ummah that the Hidayah. Allah gives it in various different ways. So our topic is not about the Palestinians today, but we have to touch upon the Palestinian issue. More than ever before. So just a little bit. We know today, because of what happens in Palestine, because of all those oppressions, it's wrong what's happening to them. Yet, through that, Allah SWT is Hidayah. So many non-Muslims have since the attack that took place uh, on October, 7th of October, Allah SWT gave so many people the diet, and it's an unending thing. It's like a thing now to, to become Muslim. And subhanAllah, people that are well educated entering Islam and using that education that they have achieved to further the deal of Allah SWT. What once we're not Muslim today, is standing for Islam. What's once against Islam is today speaking in favor of Islam. That's only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we are coming towards the end of the year. Now this is not our Islamic end of the year. We just had our Abu Haram very, very shortly, recently. Right? So we are not necessarily following this. However, since it is the end of the year, we have to reflect. We have to reflect that what is our condition before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That all the trials and tribulations and the difficulties Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has put us through, did it make us better Muslims or have it not made us better Muslims? If Alhamdulillah it has made us a better Muslim, it has made our iman firm, strong, like the Palestinians, like the Gaza brothers and sisters. Like those who are fighting peace, people who have memorized the Quran, who at least, in order to join them, you have to have 10 ajza, 10 uh, surahs, uh, uh, 10 ajza of the Quran that you have memorized. In order to join them only. If you come in the hundred every single night. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us for all these type of things. So we look now, we reflect, we introspect. Each one has to look at his own self. From where we've come, up until now, and how we're going to be If I have, alhamdulillah,
that, we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And as we mentioned before, it's very simple to make the sajda to sugar. It's just one sajda, Allah akbar, and then Allah akbar again into sujood, and then you come up and then you breathe. Alright? And you breathe to your left. That's a form of thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whichever way we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it doesn't matter. The rewards, the benefits, the favors will return back to us. Allah loves the state that is grateful. Allah loves the state that is thankful. However, my dear brothers and sisters in Islam, if unfortunately, when we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, before we even get on, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. If through all these trials and tribulations we are only human, we make mistakes, we did not become little Muslims. In fact, we became a little bit bad. Maybe a little bit worse than what we were before. Maybe we were so far away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, now we were further away. <coughs> so that's what we, inshallah, we want to discuss today. What is keeping us, myself and yourself, what is keeping us from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? So there are lots of reasons, lots of things that can cloud us, cloud our judgment, cloud our understanding, block us, prevent us from getting close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But the thing that stands out the most, uppermost, most important thing is unfortunately sins. Now all of us are human beings, we all make mistakes. Myself, I am included. Any learned individual is included. Like all of us, we make mistakes. But what are we speaking about? We are speaking about those particular mistakes that the person does not do mistakenly. Those errors and sins that the person commits, not because he doesn't know, because he doesn't know Allah won't take him to ask for it. If somebody didn't know that smoking is haram, he's not, not taking him to ask. Allah won't punish him for that. There is no sin upon him. But when he doesn't know, and then he doesn't, that's just an example, right? It's an example. So we're talking about the sins that the person commits. The sins that the person commits intentionally. And then he does it, he or she, continuously. Are there any repercussions for that? Are there any effects, negative, harmful effects? If a person commits a sin over and over and over and over, and nothing happens to him. So inshallah we look at that today. Because going forward, we cannot go forward. The example is being shown to us as if the Quran is being revealed today. What was happening to our brothers in Palestine and in Gaza. Over and over, those people you become more firm. That you can't kill these people. You can't destroy these people. So that are perfect example for us. And all we they want for us, as we know, dua. Just dua. And we can see the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with them. So what are those sins? There are many. We are able to, at the moment, tabulate each and every sin in the dunya. It will take us our entire lecture for today. So what we are going to do, inshallah, we are going to mention the harmful effects of these particular sins when it's being committed by a Muslim, male or female, consistently. So Allah SWT might give us, I don't know what is in, in, in anybody's heart here. I don't know your private life, nor do you know mine. So whatever we do, whether openly or in private, if it is something which is displeasing to Allah, then may Allah grant us the ability to abstain from it. What are the harmful things? I'm just going to tell you a few. The Ulama actually mentioned over 100, sometimes over 200, sometimes over 300. Different effects that the sins can have when the person continuously disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We might think that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is just leaving that person, but there are certain effects that already take place in this dunya, and we ask Allah's protection that it takes place to any Muslim in the year after. The safest person, the successful person, is the one when he leaves his dunya, he sends safe behind, then he goes. Unfortunately, sometimes people don't make tawbah for their sins, they don't ask to stay far for their sins, so then they leave this dunya, and then now in the year after, they still have to account for it. And Allah grant us the ability to reach and to make tawbah before.
before the end of the family. So one of these, Hirmad al Ilmi wa Rizq. We might find it far fiction, but it actually makes sense if we introspect into our own lives. The first, one of the first negative and harmful effects of continuous sins and disobedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the person will be deprived of beneficial knowledge. Knowledge that they would need in their daily practice as a Muslim, whether it be salah, zakah, or hajj, or beneficial knowledge in their dunya. Because right? everything we do in this dunya is for our real home in the year of. So number one, he gets deprived or she, she gets, he or she gets deprived of beneficial knowledge in this dunya and the second thing they get deprived of sustenance so our sustenance we know is very really good for us right? it can increase though yeah? right? you can think oh Allah give me more maybe you are supposed to get the money right and then pass away nobody will leave this dunya except that he must complete and fulfill and partake of every part of sustenance that is allotted to him and accounted to him and that he owed to him Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala once that happens then he passed away right? so either the sustenance gets reduced or if Allah wishes Allah can completely take the sustenance away what if a person may have died earlier what's supposed to all of that is in the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so the first thing that happens is Continuous disobedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we are deprived of the emotional knowledge and we are deprived of the sustenance that Allah can give us. And by Allah is the treasures of everything. We just have to wait when we ask that. Second thing, inshallah, I will try to make it as uh, not so many as uh, like an entire long list. Inshallah, just give a few. Another one is. Dhulmatul Qal Wal Waj Wal Qamr This one is actually a very interesting one They say when a person continues to uh, persist and uh, in the disobedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and persistence of committing sins even in this minor sins what will happen here? the heart not physically, spiritually and the spiritual will be Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala even though we do it physically right? like Salah so spiritually, the heart becomes dark and uh, black. Darkness enters and covers the heart. Then they say the face blackens and becomes dark as well. And then they say in the power for that person, the grave will be dark as well. And we know about the grave. And so really dark by, by, by default. It's another light place. There's no moon in there. Is the actions of the individual which will be a cup, means of comfort and mood for him. Whatever he decides, whatever he can to make, the type of life that he lives, that will be the environment that he'll have in his grave. As for the one who doesn't have it, unfortunately, what's the opposite of light? Darkness. Right? So they say that when a person continues with sins, disobedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the heart, they sold up the darkness. And if we think a little bit, we can, we can sort of make a, an analogy and a, and a comparison. If we, the heart begins to blacken, the heart is the center of the entire human body. The heart is right, everything is right. The heart is filthy, everything becomes tainted. It begins to show in the limbs, it begins to show in the eyes, it begins to show in the ears, etc., etc. So they say, then what happens is, it begins to then manifest and show in his face. The face becomes a little dark. Now what of this? That doesn't mean people have a bit of a dark face, dark complexion. That's what exactly what's happening to you. No. This is in general. Don't mean anybody specific. Because Allah created us more differently. This is more spiritual than it is physical. So we shouldn't go looking at somebody's face and like, like because of Jesus, so I see that here. That's what we mean, right? And then the person is supposed to, like all of us, we're supposed to constantly make tawbah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But sometimes we forget. So this person will be forgot. Allah knows best. And he passed away. And now he's in his grave. And in his grave, there's no light. Because the actions he used to do are not actions that would produce and grow light for him. It's actions of darkness. Because all he has is bad deeds. Right? That's another one. Another one of them, which I'll come to your point is the Prophet made certain du'as for us. The 
like that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is reputed for the human being in front of him, behind him, on his right, on his left, all there is no protection. Sometimes we know about him, sometimes we don't know about him. And some of them they make dua for us. Like when somebody goes to seek knowledge, goes into goes to a class, or goes to study Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's deen, hear the Quran, memorize the Quran, or whatever the case may be, the Malaika make dua for him. The Malaika goes so far to even make dua, not them, the, 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 the du'as uh, go so far as even in the they come from the fish in the sea. And the angels making dua for this creation, they want to learn more about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Samarullah say that's actually specifically for just the scholar, Allah, Allah knows, best. So, we are. The other harmful effect of continuous disobedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is that the individual will be deprived of the du'as of the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He will be deprived of it. He will even be deprived of the du'as of malaika for him. Malaika will be deprived of the ummah of Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We are almost to the end of this small list inshallah. But we can't mention the hand or two hundred. Another one, whatever flavors Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has gifted us or wants to give us once we can be uh, are continuous and persistent in a wrongful action, what will happen? The flavors will be removed. Now, I want you just to think for a long time. This budget has a lot of space. Right? A lot of space. That space or any other place in this entire cosmos universe must be occupied with something. Isn't it? There's always something, wherever there's a place, something there. Even if there's like a vacuum, it's not really a vacuum. There's either like air there, or there's some gas there, or there's people there, or there's houses there, or there's buildings there. But every place is not a vacuum all unto itself, it needs to be occupied. And as soon as the people leave, something else takes place. Even if it's just air. That's how Allah made it in there. Right? Therefore, Allah can't be in a place. Because He created place and space. He can't be in His own creation. Right? Because He made something called space or place. Anyway. So just think that for, for, for a moment. Allah has put in our lives famous children, health, wealth, cars, houses, iman. Taqwa, Ihsan, all the various types of flavors which we need to start to think about our own life in perspective. I look at myself and I can say, I love this flavor, that flavor, this flavor, that flavor. Allah gave me that already. SubhanAllah, this is on its way, this new world baby coming, etc., etc., etc. I'm not speaking about myself, I'm just moving to me as an example. So if the flavor is taken away, what's the opposite of the flavor? A calamity, a difficulty, a misfortune. Now, if the person is consistent and persistent in the wrongdoing, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes away the favors and automatically is replaced by difficulty. So, you can actually understand this. Sometimes certain things happen to us, then we don't know where it's coming from. But you can understand, you don't understand what the heck is. You can't understand what the heck is. You can't understand what the heck is. Where is this coming from? Perhaps. There is a mistake in my life. I did not fix it yet. I'm still holding on to that one sin. And none of us here sitting is free from all sins. But we are talking about, we know about our mistakes, and intentionally, we're not trying to fix it. If you try and you fail, Allah loves that. You're going to try again. You try and you fail, Allah loves that. You're going to try again. You try and you fail, Allah loves that. You just keep on coming back. Like the guys of brothers and sisters, right? They keep on going back. Right? They, they constantly show their connection is so firm with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, nothing can cut it. Nothing can cut that. That's Iman. Allah, Allah gives us for that. Allah, we have not gone through such suffering. And we, we hope Allah don't put us through that. But if anything should happen, what would be our response? Allah is best. Allah help us, Amen. guide us, Amen. and assist us in our dunya, and also, more importantly, when we enter into the, the Akhirah. We start becoming to an end.
So inshallah, we understand my dear brothers, that the effects of doing that which is this between to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is detrimental. It has long-lasting effects. So the opposite is, whatever I mentioned, you just say, replace it with the opposite. You just replace it with the opposite. Right? So, uh, example, I want to give, what is the solution? Can okay, mention much more, but what is the solution? The last one I do want to mention, I think is very important, I shouldn't leave this out. Because I, I would like us to, myself included, to walk away today and think about this. Just think about this. We want to go as a community year forward. We don't want to stagnate. It mustn't be the same as it was last year, or the year before that, or the year before that. It must become better. We must become better. So one of the last harmful effects of continuous sinning or continuous disobedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is that the spiritual heart that we have, the heart Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us, spiritually, it either becomes completely sick, right? No, it's not disturbing you. And they say, I can't feel my or no one. Yeah, we know. They don't have a say about that. But normally, they can sort of judge. And then, you know, they say, for example, it's cancer. You know, and the person told him that stage 4, right? Stage 4 cancer. And then they say, oh, I think you can do it. You know, I'll send the person now and take care for it. Take care of it. Take care of it until the time comes. Sometimes people survive. But the point is, either the heart becomes that sick, you can't treat it anymore. Or, or, the heart dies. The heart dies. I mean, the heart dies. Nothing can penetrate the heart anymore. A person will be sitting in a lecture. A person will be sitting, Allah forbid, may Allah protect us. A person will be sitting and listening to something of beneficial, something beneficial of the Quran or the Sunnah, and it cannot penetrate the heart. So what will happen? The result of that is the person won't make Tawbah. It's not that the person don't want to make Tawbah. It's that he can't make Tawbah. Because the heart doesn't reflect whatever it is being poured into it by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's the choice Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us. Right? We have free will to a certain extent in this dunya. So what's the solution? You want the long way or the short way? The long way is taqwa. The short way is tawbah. Long way is taqwa. So you can't give the entire long way now. We'll make it short, inshallah. Taqwa? What's taqwa? You say God consciousness, God feelings. What it simply means is, I am conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to the extent that whatever I said, whatever I'm gonna say, all of it, even if I'm gonna live for another 20 30 years, Allah hears everything I say. So I'm conscious of it. I'm watching my words. Whatever I do, did, will do in the future. I know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sees everything. If we can walk around on a daily basis with such a behavior in practicing our deen, inshallah, that is what is basically taqwa. Such consciousness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But to explain that in detail, we need a rajuma. So we go to the short way. In order to get to taqwa, True consciousness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we need true tawbah. To get true tawbah, we need true, true tawbah. So what's tawbah? Tawbah is repentance. So you ask Allah, Ma, Ya Allah, I ask you forgiveness, that I disobeyed you. I was supposed to do this and that, I ask you forgiveness. Right? What is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tell us? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala atani wa shirum wa ta'af. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Quran, Ya ayu al-lalina amanu, aw dhu suwa bihid, tuhu ya Allahi tawbatan nasuha. That's so beautiful. Allah doesn't say, tuhu ila maulana. So it's a, you know, tuhu ila walidi, walidayka wa walidina. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't say, repent, Perform a true repentance to your parents. Perform a true repentance to Mount Asunso. Perform a true repentance at the MGC. Perform a true repentance to Muti Sawan Sawan.
and do all the judge so and so. It doesn't do that. It doesn't say that. Allah SWT says, Tubu ila Allahi tawbatan nasuha. Ila Allah. Perform my true repentance to Allah. It's like Ali al he said, he said he is happy for one thing. That uh, I'm not giving that of the spirit. Don't misunderstand. Right? But on that day, everybody will want to save himself. Even if it's somebody else. Nobody wants to go to China. Right? So on that day, he's, he's glad that the one who will decide where he will go. China or China? It's not the parents. Allah will decide. Because Allah will be just. So your person should go to China and you put all of us from the protection, to the barakah of the Jummah, to the barakah of this hour, and Allah save us from that. And we don't have to make any detour towards Jahannam. Right? But if Allah has this decided, then it's fine. And Allah is just. Allah knows us better than we know ourselves. We're coming to the end, inshallah. So we said it is Tawbah. Right? And repent it. So what's a, what's a true Tawbah? A true Tawbah as Umar radiallahu anhu said is that the person number one, the person that repents to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For whatever wrong he did, not to anybody else, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, whether he makes two rakat, no makes two rakat, but it's before Allah and he repents to him what he does, which is wrong. English, no regards, Arabic, doesn't matter. He repents to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala number one, and then he doesn't return to the sun number two. Right? Doesn't return to the sun. Umar radiallahu anhu is an example. It's like when the milk comes out of the udders of the cow, the milk doesn't go back up, isn't it? So just like that, when he repents from the sun, he doesn't go back to it again. And then he adds one other thing, he says, that whatever the person has taken wrongfully from others, or done wrong to others, he has to either go off the mouth, or he has to hand over what doesn't belong to him. Uh, to him. One little bit. One example for us to see how or what a true tawbah looks like. So Fulayr ibn Aqiyab was a highway robber. So he was a very smart person, by Islam. And the people were on their way, um, wherever they were going, right? And then he would wait for them. And then he would hijack them, right? Rob them of their goods, of their property, and so forth. And on one, on one particular day, or those nights, he would go casually, usually, he'd go to his girlfriend. Is that the son? Yeah, that's the son. That's the son. But he obviously knew it's the son. Right? He knew it's the son. And he goes in a regular way, right? A certain time, and he goes, he climbs the wall, and I'm probably thinking that Allah knows best the Romeo and Juliet that they speak of in the West, maybe they took us from the Muslims. Allah knows best. But he's climbing the wall and he's going to go to his beloveds, right? And somebody close by, one of the neighbors probably, is busy reciting Quran. And they're busy reading. Alam yahdi fil ladina amanu an takshaa kuluhum li dhikri Allah wa ma nazala min al And that affects him so completely, I do so. To the depths of his heart and the fixing and it causes a change. That only Allah can do. Allah's words can do. What does the verse say? He hears the verse. The verse is saying, isn't it time? Isn't it by time that the hearts of the believers become humble? That word sabbat. Become humble before the remembrance of Allah. وَمَا نَزَلَ مِنَ الْحَقِّ And that which has been revealed in truth is not by time. So what happened to Fudayl bin Ayyad? Fudayl bin Ayyad, highway robber, turned at that very moment and he responded. He never responded before. At that moment, Allah had decreed he died for him. He responded and he says, بَلَا يَا رَبْ قَدْ آنَا And he used the same word in the ayah, أَلَمْ يَأْتِ They, يَأْتِ uh, okay, the verb that he's using it as a forward, but the same source of the word that he comes from, he says, I swear by you, my Rabb, now is the time. He's reading it. And he turned from a highway robber to become a very, very pious individual. One of Allah's awliya. He would shun the dunya, live a very, very uh, uh, specific type of 
lifestyle which doesn't involve uh, taking only what you need from the dunya and carrying on. Not only that, they are a became a scholar of Islam and a great scholar of Hadith. One last thing before we end is that he had a servant. Huh? Ibrahim was a servant then. In Ashraf. But anyway, Ibrahim, the servant, there was something about after he changed, became, uh, became uh, what do we, a mental one, right? The servant, of course, knew where he used to go. So he noticed, whenever he, whenever the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is mentioned, and whenever he listens to the Quran, he is automatically overcome with fear and grief and sadness over what he had done before. And then his tears begin to flow. And then he begins to cry. Right? Other scholars afterwards, he wasn't even a scholar yet, now he's a scholar himself. Other scholars who were there before him and learned and uh, 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 acquired knowledge long, uh, long before him, they say when they see him, it reminds them of the grief of their sins that they committed. And automatically they feel that they have wronged themselves. SubhanAllah, this is what true Tawbah is. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah gives us with continuous Tawbah until our Tawbah reaches such a level that we never ever go back. It's easy to say, have the Tawbah, but action is a different thing altogether. Wa sallallahu ala sayyidina wa nabiyyina wa anna Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa ala alihi wa sallam wa ala alihi wa sallam wa alaykum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala